This is iFiber One News. Here are today's top stories. The Afraid of Fire Department is hosting its annual Touch a Truck event Saturday, May 20th. Officials are reporting an increase in bear sightings in the Snohomish area since March. Thunderstorms on Thursday caused major damage over in western Washington. From the iFiber One newsroom, this is iFiber One News. And it starts now. The Afraid of Fire Department is hosting its annual Touch a Truck event Saturday, May 20th. The 7th annual Touch a Truck runs from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Splash Zone parking lot located at 780 A Street Southeast. The event gives children a hands-on opportunity to explore vehicles of all shapes and sizes, including police and fire vehicles, search and rescue vehicles, race cars, construction and farm equipment, and more. Law enforcement, firefighters, and professionals who use the vehicles will be there to answer questions and explain and demonstrate how the vehicle works. The event is free to attend and designed to educate children about different vehicles that service Grant County. This is Joe Utter for iFiber One News. So this is the entry point here. The green grass, tall trees, and berry bushes on R.J. McIntosh's Snohomish property are getting more than he bargained for. We have visitors. Furry visitors that have become a little too friendly. I like to call it bears in our backyard. A mama bear with her three cubs. The third time it happened, I said, okay, something's up. McIntosh believes the family's den is just below his backyard. The sow apparently right at home. Mama Bear saw our beautiful grand fur here and decided to take a stop, stood up on her hind legs and started rubbing her back against our grand fur tree. The bears are just being bears. Officer Mike McCoy is with Fish and Wildlife. A sow with young cubs is, it's a tough predicament. Uh, we, that would more or less be a very last resort if we had to intervene. Fish and Wildlife says they've received 20 reported bear sightings around the Snohomish area since March, including this black bear right in the middle of a residential neighborhood. We do not want them to establish camp per se on somebody's property. So by removing food sources and then occasionally doing uh, some low level hazing, making noises. McIntosh says he's done that, but mama and cub seem to be content to stay. She's happy here, uh, but I want her to be on her way. The first sign was the dark, spooky clouds that rolled across Thurston County. Then lightning lit up the sky as powerful bolts branched down and set off a chain reaction of devastation. Amanda Gordon and her daughter got caught in the midst of it. And a power pole came down right in front of me, over the hood of the car. And of course, I sort of freaked out. Energized lines collapsed across several roads, including Yelm Highway, and trapped drivers like Gordon. Panicked, she reached for her phone. When I tried to call 911, it took us like five times to get through. Mary Wickstrom's husband found himself in a similar situation with live wires draped across his SUV. His wife waited down the road for emergency crews to rescue him and stayed in touch by phone. Escaped getting, from getting smashed by the tree and now I'm you know, worried about the electric, electrical issue. But. Powerful gusts toppled dozens of trees along College Street Southeast and the heavy rains left many roads swamped by standing water. Several parked cars didn't stand a chance in these high winds and got crushed in this QFC parking lot. Many roads became impassable once the storm fronts rolled through. Amanda Gordon and her daughter had to sit tight for two hours as rescuers made their way to her. So they cut down trees to get to us to make announcements from a loudspeaker to say that uh, no one get out, the lines are live. Finally, they got out and dad showed up to head back home and put this frightening ordeal behind them. You freak out quite a bit, especially in the beginning, and cry and then go, okay, they're gonna come get me, they're gonna get me. From the iFiber One Weather Center, I'm Jeff Slakey taking a look at the basin's forecast. Near 60 for Monday with chances of rain, though no accumulation expected. Tuesday, mid to upper 60s and mostly cloudy skies. Could near 80 by Wednesday, 
clear skies and 87 or so for Thursday. Friday, we're back down to low 80s and 70s over the weekend. For iFiber One, I'm Jeff Slicky. This is iFiber One News. For more information on these stories and other news, visit us online at iFiberOne.com or check us out on Facebook.